The funeral service for a Jamaican actor and DJ given name Leonard Ford, more popularly known as Louis Rankin and famous for his role as Teddy Brockshot in the cult movie classic Shutters, was held in Ontario, Canada on Saturday, October 26, 2019. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Those who can, please remain standing. The family, if you so choose, you may be seated if you want. But join us as we praise the Lord this morning. Come on, let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. What a privilege to be His this morning. If you know this, sing along with us. I'm a glad pilgrim right here. I'm a glad pilgrim on my way. Reach them! My brothers and sisters, this Saturday morning we're here to pay our last respect to your friend, to your father, to your brother, to your uncle, your cousin, and your friend. One who celebrated life and has gone home. As he lies in his casket this morning in silence, He's speaking loudly to us by reminding us of our own mortality. This service began with an open casket session before 9 a.m., which lasted for one hour. With the ceremony itself running for approximately one and a half hour inside the New Haven Funeral Center, located at 6785 Mill Creek Drive in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Tributes were given by family members and friends. Uh, good morning. First of all, I'd like to wish my sincere and heartfelt condolences to Louis' family immediate and distant, and his friends. I chose this morning to say something because I, I came across somebody who has a lot in common with me. Where we come from, I don't they so. <laughs> Those of you who can't inter interpret for them. <laughs> oh, we come from the same enclave. And so because of that, I knew exactly what Louis was all about. Louis, for me, when I first met him over 20 years ago, mirrored exactly what I was. Someone who was trying to make it, someone who was trying to get it done no matter the cost, you know. At the time I met him, he had already been a reputed DJ. And he was just hot off of the heels of... Um, Hype Williams' hot movie, Belly, the original Dan Dada, oh, your man. <laughs> yes, Louis. When I met him, I, I, I heard his voice first. And he was surrounded by many people. Louis had a lot of charisma. Anywhere Louis went, Louis had people laughing. Louis had people just hanging, just waiting to hear him open his mouth. We are Sepal Campbell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I remember that very fondly. Louis did something 
that not many of us, you know, under all of the pressures of life, uh, where you're from, your demography, where you're from, and um, what you had to go through, Louis became this absolutely wonderful DJ, reputed DJ, Emmy awarded DJ. Louis became this actor that I was in awe of on the set because Louis executed so beautifully. And there's a thing in the business of being the actor when you're on set and you're working with your peers, you ask for the feed where, it, where you all on, in front of the camera start believing in the same situation. It was easy with Louis because he was a professional. And I'm glad to have met you, Louis Rankin, Leonard Ford. I'm glad to have met you. And I want to say here also publicly, I thank you also for making a very invaluable contribution to the arts of Jamaica. Much love and respect, Louis. Talk to you soon. Let's sing this together. Oh Lord, my God, right here. Let's sing. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints in the snow. I am the sun on rain green. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning rush. When you awaken in the morning hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. I am alive in your heart. I am the original Jamaican Dandara, Leonard Ford, AKA Louis Rankin, AKA Big Ute, AKA Sweet Daddy, AKA Ox, AKA Teddy Buckshot. You will forever be in my hearts, in all our hearts. Rest in peace, Uncle Louis. Standing before you are the children of the late Louis Rankin, Leonard Ford. With the exception of our brother, Peter and Troy, it is an extreme difficult occasion why we are gathered here today. However, we stand here strong because of the love and support you have shown our family during this time, and because we know that our father was well loved. Before I read the second scripture of the day, while I'm on the topic of love, I would like to read a quick encouraging tribute. It is written by Cheryl, my dad's wife. 
I have an inborn connection to a loving God that can never be severed. While the experience of love as a human emotion can end, divine love is eternal. God is love, and this perfect love is part of my divine nature. I am able to access this love in every moment regardless of where I am or what is happening around me. I once asked a bird, how is it that you fly in this gravity of darkness? The response was, love lifts me. When I find myself feeling sad or discouraged, angry or afraid, I can turn to the one presence of love that is always available to comfort me. I can shift my focus from pain to love, knowing love is the foundation of all creation. In the darkest nights, I can allow love to lift me. First John 4 and verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Love created our Father. Love birthed him. Love carried him through this life. And this morning, love sends him home. A reflection uh, than a eulogy. You know. Give you a little bit about Louis from a brother's high, you know, inside the family, back doors, you know. Louis, uh, you know, before I speak on Louis, I'd just like to um, give a shout out to my mom. This has been, uh... thank you. You know, the burden has been really tough on my mother. She's 84. Really rough on the family. It's been tough on my mom. She's been in her 80s while all this is going on. And then Louis comes to Canada, 2009. And, um, you know, happiest day in our life. Prodigal son is back home. You know, Louis comes home. When Tana sees Louis, she lights up. You know, every, I tell you this, every parent's have a favorite child. <laughs> oh, you think I'm going to say it's Louis, right? It's me? No. <laughs> no, but... Um, you know, Tana won't admit this, but we all know. <laughs> we know Louis is her favorite son, you know? And I know this is like, oh, my mom is strong, you know? She survived through it all. She's a prayer warrior, Christian, you know? And God is what was bringing Tana through all this, and all of us, you know? I just single out Tana because you're not supposed to bury your children. Your children are supposed to bury you, you know? So. She's a strong black woman, spiritually strong. So put your hands you know, together for my mom. All right, all right, all right. Enough about Tana. Let's talk about Louis. Oh, Louis is Louis, Louis. You might know Louis, you know. Teddy Brock shot, Ox, you know. Louis Rankin, people in New, uh, New York, you know, Sweetie Daddy, you know. Number one DJ outside of Jamaica. You know, Louis live in New York, you know. And, uh, but Louis has been talented from, he was little, you know, as a little boy. Well, I'm little still, but Louis is like bright, you know what I mean? Like intelligent, you know, book smart kind of kid. You know, he's a little bad boy with smart. The rest of them were there, don't go to school, don't stay, and ace the test. You know what I mean? Teacher be complaining about Louis. You know, we have, we have a teacher in St. Thomas, Mr. Carty. Him only teach the top of the class them. You know, go to public school and pick out the top three, top four out of the school in grade in uh, sixth form. Them time they have farm, last grade. And, uh, you know, he had Louis. Louis was his best student. But every day he come complain to Pop, say the boy bad in doing work. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, Louis is just naturally bad, you know what I mean? I tell you how Louis bad. You hear Louis say that he's uh, from Rockford, in Barna Rockford, Warwick Hill. You hear me, man? You see Louis? Louis bad at St. Thomas. <laughs> No more clan. I bought Louis body on the runway when he was a little boy, got torn. When I see Louis for years, it seemed like, you know, one day it seemed like a year anyway back then, he loved a little brother, you know. And Louis runway got torn, find some family in the rock foot of a Warwick Hill and jam there for years. Come back to the country now, I'm about 15 or 16. I mean, you know, say Louis runway, I'm about 12. Come back to the country now, Kingstonian. Nobody can't talk to him about country, you know what I mean? All the girls say, oh, Louis, Louis! Like, really? You know what I mean? So he come back, he come back to the country, you know? To, um, you know, it's true with the Kingston thing. He's Kingston, and now he's got the mark on him, you know? 
all of us were all glad that we come back up there, and, you know. But uh, it just so happened that as Louis come back, not even a year or two, my mom had to leave. Um, she passed the nanny course, and them time they have to do a little program to get nanny, become a foreign, can be a maid, and so, you know, Tana passed the course. What, Tana, you're big. <laughs> and then, you know, she fly out. This was about 68. That would make Louis, what, 53? Oh, my mom, 15. <laughs> yeah, you know, so Louis started taking care of us. Louis was... This guy, this Louis is destined. He's just a special person, special character person. He started taking care of us, him and Pops. But Pops was a truck driver, so Pops is never home. You know, he's gone all the time. So Louis is like mother, father, big brother, friend. He was everything. And the best cook ever. Like, all right, think a joke. Who washed rice on the internet and go viral? <laughs> you know, like, like Louis, Louis does things that. It just blows up, man. He, just, he, was natural. he was a natural kid. You know, and growing up in St. Thomas, you know, when Louis left, like, this was our family life with Louis. You know, all the siblings, there's uh, seven of us, you know. You know we all, you know, you know, like, you know, very close, you know. There's Louis, there's um, Jati, Clarence, there's my sister Cherry, you know, Vinita, and then there's me, Steadman, Arrow, Steady Rider. <laughs> and then there's uh, Gus, and then Pam, who passed, and then Jean, you know, with like a wash belly. Just as bad as Louis, this EMG in there. <laughs> yeah, man, but, uh, you know, he was taking care of us. Just think about it. A little 15-year-old, uh, the only difference with Canada and Jamaica, when you're 15 in Jamaica, you're not a normal 15, you're a big man. Uh, you tell Jamaican 15-year-old, say, my little they laugh after, yeah, I eat that hour. Yeah, man, so Louis had that quality in him. He took care of us, all seven of us, you know. Then my dad fly out two years later, 1970. You know, Louis is totally in charge. You know, taking care of us. Best time of my life. <laughs> Louis, girly, girly Louis looking after us. Yo, you know the difference. Anyway, but Louis took care of us, you know what I mean? Step up to the plate, my mom would send money down, Louis go shop, you know, buy his food, buy like a tin curry, uh, tin, what, what was it, Cherry? Maybe he used to buy it on the side and go run boat. You know, a couple of them friends, they're my tin, yeah, man, tin mutton, man, yeah. Don't play no mutton, Louis, hey, you got to go shop and a half, I don't play Louis again. Yeah, Never mind. <laughs> But, you know, this is, this is us growing up, right? It's our family, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're tight. So all we have was, you know, from Louis was um, born, and from everyone, all of us was born, because Louis is the biggest one, until um, it was Louis' turn now to fly out. You know, so Louis um, came to Canada about, um, I think this was about 74, two years after Pops, you know, Louis came to Canada. And um, didn't like Toronto much. It was a little bit slow for him. You know, so he, uh, he bounced. He went to uh, the United States. He went to Hartford, Connecticut. You know, where he lived for um, a few years. You know, he met Alice down there. He had um, two children, you know, Dion and Shanta down there in, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, down there in Connecticut. And he started um, doing his thing, you know. He started his DJ, and his DJ career started um, in Hartford. You know, bad DJ, one body sauna, a uh, uh, Connecticut Papa Mook. You know, I'm sauna, Rastaman sauna, you know, Louis a culture DJ at the time. DJ was just breaking out in Jamaica, where, uh, you know, the culture DJs were the ones that was, you know, on the rise. Like Brigadier Jerry, Josie Wales, Super Cat, Ninja Man, Shabba. You know, and them DJ that bust them time there, you know. And uh, those are the DJ where and any one of them come on New York, guess what? You have to put up with Louis. All of them are Louis Bergen. You know, all of them. Call them all. You know, and a shout out to everyone that uh, big up Louis. Uh, you know, on uh, their IG pages and Instagram everywhere. You know, that send your shout out. Cartel and L. Soon come out with my youth. Yeah, man. But big respect to everybody. You know what I mean? And uh, Louis, um, don't beat comes to town. Don't beat to tell me this. You know what I mean? Comes to town at about, um, you know, after Louis has been in Hartford for about six years. Big clash. I don't beat against um, Papa Mook. At the end of the dance, um, don't beat me, Louis. You know, he said, Louis, I am a DJ. He's a good DJ, you know. But you're up on the wrong sound. And you're in the wrong city. Come on, New York City. Come DJ, up on the ruler. And you know, I'm big maker. I'm making name. And that was it. Louis said, what? New York? Are you kidding me? 
boom, load fly out, gang. Well, not fly out, drive out, because I tried a couple hours, four hours from, uh, yeah, man, you know what I mean? True. So, uh, the others right there, you know. So, Louis went down to New York, you know, to DJ on um, Downbeat. His career started, everything started to happen for Louis. Louis lives um, 33 years in New York before he came to um, Canada in 2009. Uh, if I think right now, I'm a numbers guy. I think that's the same amount of numbers that Jesus lived on the land, you know, 33 years. And Louis was in New York for 33. And, um, you know, he did his thing, you know, he started. Um, doing um, music. This was his music career. He wasn't really focusing on um, uh, movies yet, you know. I, I tell you about Louis. My story my mom told me. Louis at eight years old. Where's uh, Ezekiel? Ezekiel? Stand up, Ezekiel. Okay, that's Ezekiel. He's eight. Well, Louis was about eight years old. And, you know, seven? All right, you look a bit younger than Ezekiel. We used to go to church, country boy, three, four times a week. You know what I mean? Like, every day we got in a church, it seemed like, you know, we had church as like a kid. Sometimes church had to jump. And at that time, church boring like, oh, you're sitting on the dead for sleep. Ah, want to sleep. Not Louis. He was sitting there watching the pastor them. But them a preach and a sing and a carry on, you know. Louis. Louis just watch the pastor them, so. Only to find out Louis come home and start him one ministry out of gate. <laughs> In one church. The one we are, we little right? The one we have the behind him, you know, Cherry and the Jade. I didn't get a sing, eh? <laughs> a sing, you know, Louis. And Louis are preaching. And the pastor, them used to heal. To come back in them time, the pastor, them at Jamaica, do everything. Eh? They heal people, you know, and carry on. And, you know, Louis, Louis watch them. So Louis start heal people now, too, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, man. Heal you. <laughs> yeah. And, and we did have one, all right, we did have one, one granny here, Miss Alice. You know, Miss Alice, have a thump of foot, you know, Miss. Alice, have come down. Uh, um, Alice, have come down, you know. And, um, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Alice, have come down. And I took my foot and Louis, see Miss Alice. My history is. Go for your name of Jesus. I heal you, Miss Alice. Miss Alice, jump up with her, jump her foot and start. See where she walk come there, you know. <laughs> Louis, heal me. Louis, heal me. Sort of like when Jesus healed the, the cripple and said, don't say nothing. She run, he run down on the road and tell everybody, and Jesus healed me. Jesus like, oh, no. Yeah, man, Louis, heal. Miss, uh, Miss Alice, you know, half dog, uh, Miss Alice, God, you know. Tough people start getting around Louis, you know, you know, big people, you know, not just kids, you know. You know hey, you know, Louis make music. I said, I say Louis destined to be a star, you know. You know, make music. You know, the big comb them at Jamaica. I tell you, I like comb them when the teeth just pop out. Yeah, them comb them. Well, Louis get it. And put a tin file upon it and blow. <laughs> Try it sometime when you when you go home. Just get a comb, tin file and blow it. It makes a really nice melody. And I said, this is man, that boy had different in the shadow. But anyway, Louis did I watch the pastor at them, you know. Where the pastor them never realized, you know. Is that not only Louis I watch the pastor them are ill. Louis I watch the collection play the girl two times a night. So Louis just cut out a milk can. I just put that in front of time, and the people themselves had full of money. Richest boy in the neighborhood. I'm in the state so because I'm a brother. Yeah, man, he's destined to be a star. And so when he went to New York and started DJing and started acting, that's just a formality. It's his forte. He lived for the movies. He's an actor. Life is a movie for Louis. He acted out. Stayed um, 33 years in New York. Met Cheryl. You know, they raised three beautiful kids. I want to send a shout out to Peter. Because I know Peter... Um, you know, Peter is paralyzed from the neck down. It's Louis' son in New York. And, uh, you know, he's taking this. Louis was like all Peter knows, you know. And he's taking it really, really bad. So, Peter, well, well, on, man. See? You know, God is with us. Let's read the Bible and pray. I remember the good things about Louis, you know, that you can. But um, you got to love up your son at the, the six. See? Yeah, man. With Cheryl. Got married in 85. You know, still married to Cheryl. Until he came to Canada in 2009, you know, started DJing when Shabba signed with Epic. Big thing. First Jamaican DJ to sign with an international record company. Same year, not even three, four months later, Louis signed with Warner Brothers, you know, because all the record company wanted a reggae DJ, you know, in their entourage. So Louis is in New York. They don't have to go far. You know, they pick Louis. Sign Louis. You know, Louis gone again. Drop his album, Showdown, first one. One with typewriter on it. Typewriter blew up. 
album nominated for Grammy, typewriter won the Grammy. Louis doing his thing, you know? And then he get uh, approached by, um, what's that director? Hype Williams, yeah man, Hype Williams is a famous, what do we call it, rapper director, movie director, music director. He never done a movie before. So he wanted to do a movie, he wanted the first movie with an all cast of uh, DJs and rappers for the characters. And he picked Louis to play Ox. Are you kidding me? Louis is Ox. No, no joke. Oh no, Louis and he's Ox. Yeah, but Louis, the part was just perfect for Louis, you know? He rolled that part, killed it. Like Nas says, he stole the show in uh, Belly. You know, dropped his second album, Lethal Weapon. Hip hop was just on the rise back then when he dropped Lethal Weapon. You know, so most of the songs on Lethal Weapon is a crossover. Because anyway, the money there, I did Louis a crossover too. Yeah. So he dropped his album, you know, and then right after that, he got approached by um, the guys in Miami that does Shatters. You know, there's Paul Campbell. Yeah, man, the original. To me, Rockers and Shatters. Rockers a music movie. And Shatters. Best Jamaican movie ever made. Uh, no joke. Yeah, man. Give it up for Paul Campbell uh, in the house. Yeah. Best movie ever made. Louis Kill Shatters. Teddy Brock Shat. That's Louis again. That's the funny Louis. You know, that's the Louis that we all had um, just before he passed. The Teddy Brock Shat Louis. You know, and um, I know we don't have much time, so I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to say, you know, my brother, like, he's my idol. He's the family's idol. You know, you have a brother away, a movie star. You look up to him, when he come around, wah! Everybody happy, you know, we just love it. Like, and this is crushing, right? But you know what? The Bible said in the midst of life, there's death. And we just take it casually until it hits your family. Then you really realize, um, hey, this is serious stuff. You know? So to my brother... You know, may your soul rest in peace. You know, I love you. We all love you. And God love you. And now you're in eternity. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing better, you know, to live eternally with God Almighty. Leonard Ford, a.k.a. Ox, a.k.a. Teddy Rockshot, a.k.a. Sweetie Daddy, a.k.a. Big Youth, a.k.a. Leonard Ford. And um, just before I go on, I, I have to touch on this. I never talk about Louis coming to Canada. Louis came to Canada in 2009. He voluntarily left America and uh, came here. It's like a destined trip he was on, you know? We didn't know that Louis was going to die. I didn't know. Then I didn't know. Nobody knew. One person knew. Well, probably everybody and I even know. You know what I mean? Because like, Louis, hey, Louis is coming up, guys. Hey. No, but um, only God knew that Louis was going to go. You know what I mean? But the things that Louis was doing while he was here, really, is, it's like he was just paving away. He came and he hang with all of us individually, you know? At our house, he would come and them jam. We can have, you know, his last few days, he was with my son, Shadim, you know, out in um, Pickering, Whitby, you know? Spent time with Cherry, the Dread, me, Gene, you know? He was, on a, he was on a mission, like, you know, the things he said to my sons, his last visit there, is like, wow. I was just watching the videos, and I'm going, wow. He didn't even know what's going on, but he was giving these last-minute life instructions to the boys. One thing with Louis, you know, Louis loved Pitney, you know. At um, 63 or 4, Louis started a new family with Jules. You know, he's got three kids, three baby girls, beautiful little girls, you know, with, with, uh, with Jules. You know, he started his life. Things started happening again for him. But you know what? We don't write the script. We can plan the script. But like um, V's mom used to say, man a plan, and God a wipe. The answer is with Jesus, you know? Secure your soul. If you notice, Louis has a rude boy, DJ. Him ever, ever, ever a talk about God. Ever. That's not a joke thing. He's always talking about God in his music. You know, because he knows. It's Father God that controls everything. It's Father God that does everything. And it's Father God that takes out Louis. Thank you. Along with Jamaica's Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Olivia Bobsey Grange. It's good? All the time. I want to say on behalf of the government, the people and government of Jamaica, deepest condolences 
to Lori Rankin's mother, to his siblings, and to the entire family. I'm going to ask you all to give his mom a big round of applause. She's the champion. I also want to express my condolences to the music fraternity, to the entertainment fraternity, and to all of Louis Rankin's fans. Leonard Ford, AKA Ox, AKA the original Don Dada. I must say that his untimely and tragic death reverberated across the international arena. Everywhere you had Jamaicans, right across the world in the Jamaican diaspora, as well as outside of the Jamaican diaspora, his passing came so suddenly, so suddenly. And so, as we came to the sudden realization that we lost a stalwart in the music and film industry, and a champion of the grassroots people, it was very hard to accept. I can only imagine the unspeakable pain and shock felt by those closest to Lori Ranking upon hearing the devastating news. And I'm certain that you have many, many, many unanswered questions. However, it is my sincere hope that you will get over his untimely passing, that you will ultimately experience a peace that surpasses all understanding as you come to accept in your own time that he's no longer with us. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very, very hard for all of you. But I want to assure you that his spirit will live on. His spirit will remain stronger than ever. Church, and I'm saying church, because you are in church, death is inevitable. And it is not easy to remain calm and composed and accept it when it comes. But as difficult as it may be to confront the emotions that ensue with the death of a loved one, I believe that we should use the occasion to celebrate, celebrate the life of this icon who was well loved and respected by Jamaicans and non-Jamaicans alike. And I want to use the opportunity to say with you that every one of us here this morning has a number and our number will be called. So I want to say to you, live your life, live it well, but live it right. And be ready when your number is called. So for those of us who knew and loved Louis Rankin and who had the privilege of working with him, you would have been drawn to his flamboyant, charismatic, and infectious personality. Louis was a people person who fed off the energy of those surrounding him. Yet he had the uncanny ability to ably express himself without reservations. He very much epitomized the old saying, what you see is what you get. And this was another endearing quality which also earned him great admiration and respect. Louis said it the way he saw it. He was a true Jamaican who remained loyal to his roots, and he was a proud ambassador of Jamaican culture. As many of you already know, he was a highly accomplished artist who masterfully sang or portrayed aspects of our culture. He possessed a natural, a very natural talent for the arts, having made a name for himself on the reggae and dancehall scene with popular hits such as Typewriter and Get a Soldier. His music resonated with many within and outside of Jamaica, as his lyrical prowess was unmatched and also served as inspiration for young and upcoming artists. I will never forget the days 
with specialists and I manage Shabba ranks. Shabba was signed to Sony Epic and Louis Rankin was signed to Warner. Not surprisingly, with this wealth of talent, Louis Rankin made an easy transition into acting which propelled him into greater stardom with the release of the movie's belly in 1998 and rerun these streets in 2014. And I want to pause and use the opportunity to recognize Paul Campbell, who is here with us this morning. And I have to just mention, when Paul starred in The Lunatic, I was responsible for the promotion. And we pulled off an unbelievable feat. Paul lived on the streets for months so as to understand what it was like for those people who lived on the streets, who everybody said they were mad. So Paul lived with what we would call mad people for many months. And then when the movie was going to be premiered in Jamaica, we really wanted to make the front page of the star. So we set an appointment with a madman. So the first day, when we set the appointment, we went. He wasn't there. We eventually found him, and we set another appointment with him. Four o'clock that afternoon at the corner of Waterloo Road and Hope Road. Paul and I went there with the star photographer, and there is no, nobody is there. And we're looking around for him, and we just hear somebody come out of the corner and say, boo. So after that, he sat and they had a conversation. They had a conversation and we got the photograph, front page star. And it really boosted the movie for the premiere. But, you know, I could go on and tell you about a lot of stories, or conversations I've had with so many people who live on the streets, who people think they are mad. But they are more sane than a lot of us here this morning. And they only live on the streets because of circumstances. But... Paul had first-hand knowledge of what it was to live on the streets. So the raving reviews Louis Rankin received as a result of his persuasive depictions added more and more accolades to his professional repertoire and reaffirmed that he was a star. There was no doubt there's a saying, every nigger is a star. Well, we know this nigger was a star. <laughs> so with such an illustrious career, the original Dan Dada, his contributions will live forever in the annals of Jamaica's entertainment history and heritage. There is no doubt in my mind that you're all deeply hurting, but the support you have demonstrated by being here this morning is testament to the love you had and will forever have of our deeply departed brother. Let's treasure his memories. Those precious memories, those pre precious moments we all shared with him. Remember those moments, and he will forever be with you. He has left an indelible mark that is far-reaching, and we should honor him not through mourning, but with jubilation. I personally will honor him. We established last year was it last year or this year in Reggae Month? We established what we call the Hall of Fame and the Reggae Icons Award and the Gold Reggae Awards. And I will be nominating him for one of those awards when we celebrate Reggae Month next year. So I can only hope that you will take comfort in the fact that Louis Rankin is now in the hands of our creator whose everlasting love knows no bounds. So as much love as you have for him, you will beware that love is greater. And I want to take the opportunity to say he has been sent home in fine style. You all see those beautiful ladies from New Heaven? You know Lou Rankin love that. <laughs> Look at them coming in. Such beautiful ladies. And I want to commend Shelly and Shari and the beautiful team and the staff that has done a wonderful job in sending home Louis Rankin. Please give them a big round of applause. Bishop Walker, they are fantastic.
And so as I end my remarks, which I was going to say my few remarks, but there weren't that few, I want to end by saying that the government and people of Jamaica commiserate with you during this time, saying this to the family and fans, and be assured that you're all in our thoughts and prayers. Louis Rankin told stories through the look in his face. He did not have to say a word, but you could tell the stories. You could read his face, and you could understand what he was saying. Miss Lou, our folk hero, at this point, would say to you, I express myself, and I just want to leave you by saying, walk good, and may good duppy walk with you. But what would Louis Rankin say? Walk and live. God bless you all. There was a reception after the service for the 66-year-old St. Thomas native at the Claryport Banquet Hall. I'm found. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.